Well, good morning, church family. I want to say good morning to those watching online. Thanks for joining us today. I'm so glad, thankful that you're actually here today because today and this weekend marks the unofficial end of summer. And uh, yeah, in, in church world, we have two really low attended weekends in America. The first being Memorial Weekend. Memorial Day weekend, that is because that's the unofficial kickoff to summer and everyone goes away. And then it's this weekend. Labor Day weekend is the second lowest attended Sunday because everyone's trying to get one last glimpse of summer before the leaves change, before the crisp, cool air comes. I know. I'm only saying that because I know how hot it's going to be the next couple days, right? How many of you are actually excited about 90 degree weather over the next few days? Are you serious? God bless your soul. Well, if you're a guest, thanks for joining us today. My name is Ryan. I'm a lead pastor. And uh, right outside in our lobby is a big green pillar that says Guest Central. And uh, we would love for you to stop by, say hi. We got a little gift bag in ways for us to improve. So if you don't mind stopping out there, we would love to see you after service there. And church family, thanks for joining. I love that you're here. I love that we're ready to worship together through song, through a little bit of devotion and communion. Today we're gonna celebrate communion together. So if you missed the communion cup, you have like 30 seconds to get up and go out those doors and grab it. Or if you're really close, you can grab it here, right in front of me. There's a basket also, just to warn you. So in about 20 minutes or so, we're gonna celebrate communion together here. Uh, today's gonna look a little different though. Today's a worship and communion set. We're kinda in between series, because next Sunday, we, I'm kicking off our series titled Controversial Jesus, with the subtitle, We Should Talk. And uh, the premise of this is, the more that we're hearing from people and the more I'm just in the world uh, hearing Christians walking and a lot of us in the faith, we don't know how to handle cultural moments. And what I'm concerned with is that there are a lot of Christians being discipled by cultural moments and not discipled by Jesus Christ. And what we wanna do is look at some very difficult topics that are in culture today and figure out what does the word of God say? And that's where we, where we wanna anchor in this series. So I hope next week you come ready to take notes. Take notes, this is gonna be a five-weeker. Take notes in week one and two and three and four and five. We're gonna cover some tough stuff, but I promise you this, I'm gonna stand on the word of God and I'm gonna do it with grace and truth, amen? So let's make sure we do this together. I know you may wiggle in your seat a little bit, but I pray that your wiggling wouldn't make you wiggle your way out, but it would wiggle you right here and whatever the wiggledness is inside of your soul that you would surrender that to the Spirit of God. And let's stay there. There may be some topics where you strongly disagree with what I'm going to bring, but I'm gonna tell you I'm bringing what we see in Scripture. And I pray that you would wrestle with it. And just because we disagree doesn't mean you should pack up shop and go up somewhere else. Let's disagree in love. But let's point each other to Jesus Christ, amen? Oh, I'm excited. I hope you pray for me for this series. Um, I wanna say this, and then we're gonna sing a song. I'm not here to please people, I'm here to please God. And I know I'm held at a higher standard, the Bible says. Those who teach the word of God will be held at a higher standard. And I know what I'm held to. And I'm gonna preach the word of God. And there are topics that I'm gonna preach on that even in my own soul, I'm like, man, God, it would be easier if it was just this way. But it's not. I'm not my own authority. I stand on the authority of the word of God. And that's what we as a church are going to do with grace and truth, pointing everyone to Jesus Christ because he's the answer. Amen? 
I want to make sure I say that because here's one thing. I don't know where I'm going. You just need to start playing because I'll probably go faster. Uh, here's, here's a quick thing. Thanks, that sounds beautiful. Here's a quick thing. See, in today's world, we, we look at younger generations and say, man, they've got, they, I don't, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know where they're going to go. Here's the thing, I, I realize I'm kind of young. I'm kind of young. I mean, I'm 40. So for some, I'm old. But to others in this room, I'm young still. And here's the deal. When our community that we live in, where we work, live, and play, looks at our church and sees a younger pastor, they automatically begin to formulate ideas into their th- what our theology is. I may be young, but I will not bend the truth for cultural moments. I can't. I cannot. And we're going to stand on the truth in the Word of God, and I'm going to be a professor for five weeks in your life, and we're going to journey together and wrestle with some of these things. Because here's the problem. Culture is changing at a pace that we've never seen it change before. Culture has always progressed, but the last 20 years, it's been exponential. And we as Christians need to go, hold up. How does this work in our faith? And that's what we get to do. So, I'm excited next week. I I really am. I'm excited. Hey, thanks for your giving, church family. I say say this all the time. The pace of your giving determines the pace of the vision. And it does. We here truly believe, and we have a statement in our mission statement that says being transformed by Jesus. It's something that we desire here at Radiant Life for not just you, but for those that are outside this wall to experience Jesus Christ, having an encounter and be transformed by him each and every day. Your giving helps that. Your giving helps that in people's lives to experience the freedom that Jesus Christ brings, to live a transformed life, to be changed by the Son of God, our Savior and our Messiah, our Lord, our Master. So thank you, church family. I'm gonna ask you to stand and we're gonna, I'm gonna read a verse over you and we're gonna enter into a new song. This verse is found in Galatians 5.1. Paul is writing to the churches in the region of Galatia, which is on the southeastern side of present-day Turkey. And he's writing to those churches, the Christians there, and he says this in Galatians 5.1. For freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm then, and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. I love being reminded that you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are free. We are free. We are no longer do we have to submit to the yoke of slavery, but there is freedom in the name of Jesus Christ now. This song is new to us. We're gonna bookend the service with it. It's called, I Thank God. And what I love about this song, it's a reminder of who we were and now who we are in Jesus Christ. So I pray that as we enter into his courts, that you would enter with praise in your heart. Think about that you were once lost and now you're found. You once had a, your heart was one way, but God healed it and I thank God, amen? Let's worship.
choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the air. So, so long to my old friends, burning. You can just keep them moving. Now, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold. Sorry, I lost my mic. I thank God. He picked me up. He turned me around. And he set my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. I thank God. True life in Jesus Christ changes everything. The son of God came to die in your place, to be redeemed, bought back in right relationship with God. I don't know about you, but that song gets something inside of my bones just moving a little bit, a little bit, right? I, I, I don't dance at all. I go to weddings and when the dancing happens, legitimately, I will go outside at that point. I just, I don't dance. I bounce, that's about it. But that song makes me want to dance. Because it's a praise song. And sometimes I think it's just good to remind ourselves of who I once was. And now who I am in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just get a guy to give a shout of praise and thank my master, thank my savior, thank God for what he's done. And I know for some of you, you could come into a space like this today and carry a lot of things. You could carry your own shame, carry what it feels like, the burdens and the weight of the world on your shoulders. And you can go into that song and go, right now, Pastor Ryan, I'm not thanking God for anything. I don't even know if he's actually real. I want to show you a promise this morning. Found in the letter by a guy by the name of James. James chapter 4, verse 8. James writes this. Draw near to God, and he will draw near. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know why I love this verse? I love it because there's a condition here. There's something for you and I to do, and then there's an anchor of a promise. What you and I are to do are there those first four words. Draw near to God. And if you and I do that, here's the anchor of the promise. He will draw near to you. I wonder if some of us, we can't feel a little movement in our bones at times because we haven't done this right. We haven't created space in our schedule. Monday through Sunday, 
to actually draw near to God so he can draw near to you. We're going to sing a song called Make Room. It says, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Will you allow him to do that to you today? Draw near, and he'll draw near to you. Close your eyes for just a moment. What do you have to lay down to draw near to him? What's holding you back from more of God? you got to lay down to draw close to him so he can draw close to you. Here is where I lay down every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender.
Father God, we pray that in our hearts right now, we would begin to make room for you. Lord, give us ears to listen, hearts that are ready to obey whatever it is you call us to. But anything that gets in the way, may we allow Holy Spirit to begin to break that down, even right now. And we pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, you guys, stay standing here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of a, a, a scripture reading here together this morning. Uh, so the way this is going to work is I'll read the first slide. And, I'll, and I tried to color code it, but I don't know if you'll actually be able to tell the difference. So if you can, I'll just like point at you or something when you guys are supposed to go. We're going we're gonna to read through some scriptures in preparation for our, our time of taking communion together. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this to so make sure you read it out nice and loud when it's your turn, but I'll, I'll start us off right here. It says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed down to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is your turn. According to the law, almost everything is purified with blood. This is out of Hebrews. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let a person examine himself in this way. Let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. First go and be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. This is why many among you are ill and many have fallen asleep. If we are properly judging ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned with the world. So we're going to actually take time uh, here this morning to, to live into this, right? This idea of examining ourselves, right? And this could, this could look like uh, a few different things to, to different people. Uh, right before first service, our, our brother Rod uh, came and he had this word picture uh, of, a, of a hospital, like a full service hospital. Think of uh, like if you've ever been downtown Grand Rapids to like a, like a Butterworth or, or blood, like somewhere, they've got a little bit of everything. Uh, and, and, and he had this, this picture of the church, this church as that type of, of uh, establishment, right? In, in a full service hospital, maybe you've got people there, they're, they're delivering babies. Maybe you've got people there to, you know, for a checkup of some kind. Maybe you've got people there that are on life support, right? You've got this, this full spectrum of people in, in, in this room here this morning could very well be a reflection of that spiritually, Spiritually, maybe some of you walked in the doors and, and you're, you're, you're dead on arrival. But there's, there's no life spiritually. And you, you need those, those paddles you know, slammed against your chest, spiritually speaking. Some of you, you just came in because you know what? You, you needed like a, I don't know, a vitamin or something. Because I don't know, do people go to the hospital for vitamins? Well, you, maybe you did today, spiritually speaking. But it, it could be a, a wide variety of things. So when we examine ourselves, that could look like a variety of different things. For some of us, maybe there's some sin that we have to confess. When we take communion, right, it, it says in, in, in 1 Corinthians that we declare the Lord's death, right? This is, in a, in a sense, a participation with the death of Jesus. Last week, Pastor Pam and Pastor Ryan really uh, kind of dug into the, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. Right? This is, in, in, in a sense, a participation in that. Right, Jesus came and he died and his blood covers us. We read scriptures that, that said that. 
His blood atones for our sins. It takes away our sins. But sometimes we choose to live in such a way that we, we functionally reject the gospel. Through the gospel, Jesus gives us life and freedom from sin. But we still hang on to it because we kind of like it. Right? So maybe for some of us, there's a, we, we have to take some time to confess that. Another thing with communion is, is unity. You guys can grab a seat. I should have told you that a couple of minutes ago. I've just been awkwardly making you stand there and I just realized it. I confess to you my sin of making you stand awkwardly when you didn't have to. No. But it's unity, right? This is something that brings us together. In Christ, we are one, right? So some of us, we've, we've got some division with people. Maybe it's somebody in this room. Maybe it's somebody... Uh, at home that you're, you're, you're not here with today. But that's why we brought in that passage from Matthew. Jesus says, man, if you're there to, to give your, your gift at the altar, but man, there's something that you have that you did to somebody, they have something against you. He says, first, go make that right. Maybe before we take communion this morning, there's somebody in this room you need to go and say, hey, psh, man, I screwed up. Here's what you have against me. I want to make that right. Maybe you need to go out in the lobby and make a phone call. But let's, let's, let's create space, let's make room for the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal some of these things to us. Hey, is there anything in the way? Is there anything at odds? Because when I take this, this bread and juice, it's not a declaration that I'm perfect, right? But if we are knowingly, actively involved in something that is, is antithetical to the gospel, right? Like, man, Holy Spirit, show that to us. Show that to us and, and help me get that out of the way. So we're gonna, we're gonna sing this song, uh, I'll Come to the Altar. And, and right in this, in this song, right, it's, it's, a, it's a call to uh, come and lay these things down. JB, like in first service, man, you, you unpack that really well. Maybe you'll do that again. So I don't wanna steal your thunder. But like, but this is where we come and we actually, we, we lay things down. Whatever it is in us that's getting in the way of, of, of full participation in what Jesus accomplished for us, let's, let's lay that down. Now, disclaimer, if you see somebody come down to the altar, that doesn't mean that they're here to confess a whole like, heart full of sin. Maybe it is, but we don't know. But maybe uh, we're, gonna have our, we're gonna have our prayer partners go to the sides. Maybe you need our prayer partners to lift you up. Right, you need somebody, maybe there is something. You just need to follow that scripture in James where it says, uh, let's confess our sins to one another. So our prayer partners are gonna be down front. Maybe you just want them to lift you up in prayer because you're just walking through something and you're like, man, I just, I wanna get prayed for. This is a time for us to do that. But, so we're gonna, we're gonna sing. I'll invite you to, to stand. Although if, if during the song you wanna sit, you wanna kneel, whatever, that's up to you. The altars are open. And maybe, maybe you're, you're not actually in a relationship with Jesus, but you've, you've been feeling kind of that tug. Last week as, as Pastor Pam talked about the crucifixion and what Jesus did, on behalf of all humanity who comes to him? Maybe you felt a tug and you're like, man, I, I want to explore what that looks like. But you're not sure what that looks like? I would encourage you to go talk to our prayer partners. They would be glad to walk you through what it looks like to surrender your life to Jesus and to actually live into and take advantage of what he accomplished on the cross for us. So as we sing this, again, just uh, take a heart posture of, of Lord, search me. Show me the things in me that don't line up with your design, with your desires for my life. Let's be people who come to the altar.
found Jesus is calling There you cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Jesus is calling On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus is sitting with his followers and he uh, gives them a, a, a full picture of something that they had celebrated for centuries. If you read in the book of Exodus, you have this guy named Moses and, and he's called to lead God's people out of slavery into a place of freedom and promise. And, and kind of on the eve of their release from captivity, you have God give, give Moses this command. He says, hey, the, the, the angel of death is, is gonna go across the land. And he says, but I'm gonna give you guys a way out. He says, I want you to, I want you to slaughter a lamb and you're gonna, you're gonna take the blood of that lamb and, and paint it on the doorposts of your, of your home. The angel will see this blood and, and that blood will be the sign to, to pass over and you will be saved from death. When Jesus sits down at his last supper, what we call the last supper, which Pastor Ryan talked about here a few weeks ago, they were there to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus takes that and he, and he, and he actually clues them into, hey man, this is what Passover was pointing to all along. And he, and he takes this bread and he breaks the bread and he, and he passes it around. And, and he says, this, this bread, this now represents my body, which will be broken for you. Last week, Pastor Pam did a pretty good job talking about kind of the, the brutality of that breaking. His, his flesh literally torn on our behalf as he was, as he was whipped and beaten and then crucified. Right, he did that for us. But he, he took that bread and he says, man, like this, is, this represents my body now. So when you, when you take this bread, remember my body broken for you. So Jesus, we thank you for your body broken on our behalf. We can't imagine that sacrifice, Lord, but we thank you for it. Let's take the bread together with a thankful heart. Later in the, in the same meal, Jesus takes the cup. And he says, hey, now this, this cup, this is, is representative of my blood. He says, in my blood is gonna be something that kicks in this new covenant. Right, you guys have been operating under this system for centuries where, where blood sacrifice was required for the forgiveness of sins through sheep and goats and, and bulls and, and all these different things. You'd, you'd kill these and the blood would be spilled for the forgiveness of sins. But he says there's a new covenant and it's all based on the blood of Jesus. We read that here just a few moments ago as we read together. Right, the idea that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. It doesn't just cover it over, it takes it away. We have atonement. We can come back into a relationship with God because of what Jesus did for us. So Jesus, we thank you for your blood. Lord, you poured this out to create a new covenant with us. And Lord, we are thankful no longer the burden of law, the weight of perpetual sacrifice. Lord, you atoned once and for all for all who would call on your name. We thank you for that. Let's take the juice together with a thankful heart for the blood of Jesus.
Are you grateful for what Jesus did on our behalf at the cross? May we live every day in recognition of what this is when we come and we partake together. I want to invite you to stand. We're going we're gonna to sing a song called The Goodness of God. And, and if he's done nothing else for you ever in your life, the sacrifice on the cross is enough reason for us to sing about the goodness of God. But I also bet, like, if you, if you actually took some time and sat with Holy Spirit, you could see the ways over the course of your whole life. And there's a, there's a line in this song that says, all my life you have been faithful. And maybe you can look back even before you were following Jesus and you can see ways that God was there. Right? All our lives, God has been faithful. Sometimes we just need to recognize it. So we're gonna sing about this. And I want you to reflect as we sing this on the ways that you have seen in your life the goodness of God.
fun song, right? It's the right song to sing after communion, to say, I thank God, because as Josh said, we've been atoned for, we are at one, at one mint with God atoned by him. Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful that you came. If you're a visitor, we're, we're just, we, we really are thankful. You know, you could have gone anywhere else for church. You could have just floated in the lake today. <laughs> it's going to be hot enough, right? It's going to be hot? No? I think everybody's sleeping after that song. Did that song make you tired? <laughs> hey, we're going to do something a little bit different because Ryan specifically asked us to do something for him. You know, we're going into this series, Controversial Jesus. This is a series, you know, that's going to hit some topics that might rub you the wrong way. And if it's in the word, that's okay. Right? That's okay. Ryan specifically asked that we pray for him. So if you would, Ryan, come on up. Josh, are you teaching any in this series? No, just Ryan? Just Ryan's got all five. Oh, good. Special blessing. <laughs> that's kind of you to not uh, share that. Hey, guys, this, this series is going to be tough. It's going to be tough for us as a church. It's going to be tough for Ryan. He asked us to pray for him, so let's do that. If you just would uh, lift out a hand, uh, just uh, laying hands on him. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you uh, for men and women who teach the word in this church who stand on your word. As Ryan said, they, they will not shy back, Lord, but they will teach your, your word. Lord, would you give Ryan authority, authority in your spirit to preach the word with boldness, Lord, with all the love and grace and mercy, God, that is in you. And with the truth, Lord, you, you said that your word is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it brings wonderful comfort, and sometimes it just cuts to the heart, Lord. Give my brother the words that will bring healing and maybe some surgery where it's needed, Lord. Fill him with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. We would come ready uh, to receive, ready to hear what your word says and walk away changed. Maybe we have to think different, be different, do different. Lord, change us by your word, we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Go and be radiant.